This video discusses the attacking operators in Rainbow Six Siege that I think contribute the most guaranteed value. Whether you're looking for a place to start or you're a more relatively experienced player, these operators will always contribute something to your lineup and can work on just about every site in the game with rare exceptions or more efficient options stating otherwise. I don't just tell you to pick an operator and then leave it at that. I do try to contextualize each piece of information here as we go along through the video at about 16 minutes long. There's at least three to five minutes a piece for each section. So I'm going to talk about why the operator is good compared to other characters that are available, as well as what they can do throughout the course of the early, middle, and late stages of the round. If you learned something by the end of the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. Now, let's talk about the top five Ridge wallets. Number five, blue wallet. Number four, other blue wallet. Number three, uh, this video is sponsored by Ridge. I have been daily driving Ridge for a pretty long time, as far back as k virus, uh, 2020. So four years now, um, they reached out to me for the first time back then, uh, when Siege was going through that really big boom during the k virus kind of, you know, incubation period where everybody was sitting indoors playing games. And e-commerce, right, like shopping online was going through a massive upswing and Ridge, you know, very clearly and very smartly uh, took advantage of that. And I've been able to watch the company grow and do lots of really interesting things over the course of a, a pretty short amount of time. So their main, so their main selling point is obviously their, their wallet. That's their most popular and famous product. And it's basically just two hard pieces here, right? In this case, aluminum. And there's like a sheaf that it's built inside of. In this case, this one is, is coated with ceramic powder. And the cards go inside like this. There's a little elastic strap. And it's so smart. I mean, it's, it's relatively simple, the actual design, but the quality of the materials and the actual way it's constructed is so freaking smart. Uh, it, it takes hits like a truck. And it's small, it's slim, it keeps a low profile, and it's out of the way. I am also a huge fan of their key cases. This is a Damascus steel. This is made of pure stainless steel key case. The build quality, right? Like, it's not gonna break. So Ridge products, for that reason, have a lifetime warranty. And if you're not satisfied, you can return them uh, up to 365 days of free return. That's how confident they are in their product. And they have styles for the ladies as well. Ridge is having a sale for their 11 year anniversary for a limited time through April 1st. Go to my link in the description, ridge.com slash Gregor. You can get 30% off of your order. Link in the description, 30% off of your order through April 1st. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Dekebi. Dekebi is the premier roam clearing assist operator right now. She is in my opinion, the best flex character in the game. A flex character is somebody who kind of fills in the gap between the aggressive entry frag and the support. She'll usually be playing as a second entry in some cases if that situation is required, or she can sit in the back and hold a flank from anybody who wants to pick off your teammates when you go for the execute. So she's really clued in to the operational capacity of what's going on inside of the building, and she can help you deal with problematic characters that are trying to cut you off, harass you, and disrupt you. The reason she's so good at this is because her phone call ability has guaranteed value. So guaranteed value means that no matter what you do, when you have input, you get something. There's no viable way to counteract the phone call before it happens unless you're in a mute jammer. And in the case of a roamer, that's not really going to happen. There's no telegraph, which means there's no warning. There's no way to know when the call is going to come. It's going to catch you, and the defender will make a sound cue regardless of what happens. Guaranteed information is always going to be useful in this game. What you want to do is you want to wait for the entries to get into position, then go for the call when they start hunting, when they start looking for them. Dekebi is also one of the only effective Solus counters in the game, since Solus can't anticipate the call before it takes place. You can isolate roamers in an efficient way by giving actionable intel that's capitalized on with other characters like Lion, Jackal, other roam clearing characters. This is a global ability too, and it's going to catch as many roamers out as possible. Meaning that you get comprehensive intel, not just isolated information 
and then you have to find the rest of it. Nobody's safe from having their position revealed, like I said, unless there are certain circumstances present. The phone hacking ability that she gets when you pick somebody off is also really good. It scales later on into the round and gives her impact throughout the entirety of it. You can disrupt the site as well, and you can potentially get free flank watch if there are still defaults available at the point at which you hack. She also has solid weapons, and she has a gone six, plus utility grenades. So she can kill, she can find people, and she can provide information throughout the entirety of three minutes of the round. She is very good. Ace. Ace is still the only operator in the game that can open walls from a distance safely in a quick and efficient manner. Habana can do this, but it's not quite as fast. He splays the charges out against the wall, meaning that Bandit can't trick it. Whereas with Habana, they're slow, clunky, and they take up a lot of resources. Ace can open a lot of the wall, and he can make a standing hole or a head level vault hole on the side for angle holding. So this works on pretty much just every main wall in the game. And in some contexts, it's sometimes feasible to just have an ace for the main wall too, if it's on the exterior. Whereas with a thermite, it might be a little bit trickier. It is still tricky because you have to account for runouts when thermite is placing the charge. He is vulnerable from runouts and you need to have a flank watch. You need to have claymores. Ace doesn't really have that problem. He can get on a rappel, he can throw it. He has positioning advantage. And that is big. That is big because it doesn't expose you to risk. You want to minimize risk as much as possible when it makes sense in this game. He doesn't get C4 through the floor either, which is a really big deal. There are plenty of sites in the game where Pulse, where Valk can play below and then not only have you lost a man, but you've also lost your hard breach. So that's going to really, really put a significant deterrence to your ability to actually do anything in the execute. Because if you don't have the wall open, you can't isolate the angles that you want. And so you have to funnel into a really difficult gunfighting situation. Do keep in mind as well that the fact that you can throw the charges from a distance means that you don't have to coordinate as much. So for the example that I just gave you about Valkyrie running around with C4, imagine now you got to deal with that, right? We got to get a Twitch, maybe an IQ to combo up, find the Valk cameras. And now I have to send somebody down below. Now I have to have a drone there. There's multiple parts moving around just because of somebody in a different position that you have to deal with. There's no, there's not a lot of easy solutions to problems in this game, right? There are problems that require multiple steps. And Ace is one of the few characters in the game that doesn't require multiple steps to get value. So that's the theme of this video, right? We're talking a lot about guaranteed value. And that is exactly what Ace is. Now, let's not forget everything that I mentioned about the gadget. He also has a very good gun. He has an AK-12. So he is a very important support character. He is quintessential, backbone, gotta bring this guy all the time. But he also has one of the best fragging options and usually that doesn't happen i'm still lost on how this took place it'll be a mystery for siege until the end of time but he has an ak-12 and on top of everything else that he can do it definitely helps him ying ying is a very powerful map clear character she has guaranteed entry and that is the whole crux of the flashbangs you throw four super flashbangs wherever you want the skill ceiling isn't particularly high with them. Yeah, there's a little bit of a nuance to it. I would suggest practicing in a custom game a couple of times if you really are that picky about it. I don't think there's any shame in that. I think that's okay. I think that's fine. Because it is easy to kind of trick yourself into thinking there's no skill at all. And then you get into a game and then you throw it, but your crosshair was just a little bit off. And then it goes somewhere that you don't want. I know that they added the little thing where you can see where it's going to go. But when you're under pressure, you're going to do things differently. So, know what you're going to do. Have a plan. And with Ying, you don't really have to worry about solid counterplay. Because the flashbangs, the candelas, I should say, can flash from just about anywhere. Regardless of the opponent's crosshair placement. Regardless of whether they're looking at it. It will 
in the worst case scenario, force somebody to move. And that is still good. That still has value. She also has a solid primary weapon. It has a really big magazine and not that much recoil. So you can move from engagement to engagement without having to reload. And that's really useful for playing aggressively because that determines the amount of time you can have gun up and stay in the fight. It determines the amount of time that you can continue moving through the map, taking control, leveraging engagements, putting the defense in a position where they have to respond. It's really appropriate that she has an LMG because it fleshes out her kit in that respect. She can use the candelas through soft, destructive surfaces as well. You can put them on walls, time them. You can put them through ceilings. You can get tricky timings and outplays with these depending on what you want to do. And the sky's the limit. So not only does she has, she has guaranteed value, but she also has a floor and an unlimited amount of potentialities that you can incorporate into your gameplay if you would like to do that. There's not really a scenario where this amount of flash utility is going to be bad for an entry. The grenades are also modular. They can roll on the ground. You can throw them like a conventional grenade. There's timings. It's versatile, and you can apply it to a number of different situations. So it doesn't really matter what site you're hitting. It doesn't matter what map you're on. There's always going to be an environment where Ying can make a really nice play. She makes up well over 50% of competitive bands for a reason. And I would suggest learning how to play her if you want to get on the entry roll. Because Ying is going to be the vanguard. She is going to be the spearhead for a lot of site executes. And getting comfortable with her will make you a much better, make you a much better entry fragger. Buck. Buck is the best verticality operator in the game. He can work default vertical from above, like Sledge but more efficiently. If you consider the ammunition, if you consider the destructive potential of the shotgun, the amount of time that it takes for Buck to work the main vert when you are above, let's say you're doing a consulate hit below for garage. Sledge has to go to this hole, right? Let's say maybe I'll call it sandwich because I don't know if it's a different call anymore, but the hole where sandwich used to be. Sledge hits that, goes back, hits the rotate, maybe work some vert in the kitchen. Buck can do this more quickly. Sledge has to wait for the animation cycling of the hammer, whereas Buck goes, shoot, shoot, run, shoot, run, shoot. Right, Sledge is like, boom, wait, boom. Right, so when you're working a small amount of vert, Buck is better. He is also good for creative mix-ups and alternative approaches. He can clear positions that are normally safe without taking a direct gunfight so you can go below and you can push somebody off of that little table spot that people like to play for the main wall on the top floor of consulate it's a good example you can also go through the side and from different angles adjacent right he can work the perpendicular ang uh, angularity of the map geometry also the destruction of the shotgun is just really good in general it is enough to go through two floors. So you can work vertical from above, shoot through that floor, and then shoot through another floor below. That is a much more tricky play. I don't know how many times people are going to do that, but you can do it. His gun is also just really good. Buck, his C8 happens to be one of the better assault rifles in the game, in my opinion. It has a pretty nippy rate of fire. It has decent damage. And the recoil is kind of, eh. It's, it's a little bit more difficult, I think, to handle than maybe other assault rifles, but Twitch's F2 exists, uh, and there's a couple of crazy people out there that still use that. So, if there are people out there that can running the, that are, if there are people out there that are running the F2, I think you can run the C8. Uh, he's very good as an entry fragger as well, so he can double up either, kind of like on a flex entry frag hybrid sort of playstyle. He also has a Gon 6. He also has can openers if you want those. He has a bit more punch for the occasional shield or the bulletproof camera. He is a very self-sufficient character. He does a lot of different things. He can cover pretty much every base that you might need. Hard breach, gunning, and that sort of X factor of being able to maneuver and make plays for your team in a way that other entry fraggers can't conventionally. Buck's really good. All right, final character. We went from verticality, flex, kind of supportive roles 
And now we're on the final entry frag. Ash is the most efficient and effective entry fragger in the game. And I will outline a case why. Ash is a three speed. She has exceptionally powerful assault rifles. I don't think that any other character right now has that same combination of three speed plus gunning. You can make an argument for Habana, but Habana has a 20 round mag on that gun and you don't really want to be playing risky positioning with her because if she dies, you lose that hard breach. So Ash can afford to play a little bit more aggressively. And so we get into weird kind of territory sometimes with FPS theory where people think, well, if Ash is expendable, right? If an entry frag character is expendable, then doesn't that mean they're not as important as a character like Habana? And that's not true. Because the fact that they are expendable <laughs> in a rather um, macabre way, I guess, kind of highlights what makes them important. Because they are in that position that Habana is not, she can go into a gunfighting situation and that is suited to her. That is appropriate. It's correct. So her guns have blistering rate of fire, manageable recoil, good damage, no strong downsides. They can melt with body shots and they're easy to hit headshots with. So if you're not already familiar, I like the R4C. She also has distance utility clearing with her pro pipe. So that dispatches barbed wire on a staircase, right? If you want to go for an aggressive hit and you need to do this really, really quickly, right? Your teammates on the other side, let's say chalet, main basement hit. Your teammates on the other side going towards blue and you want to coordinate with them, but then there's barbed wire and I'm stuck. I have to do the stupid animation. I have to do the hit, hit, and then that makes me vulnerable. Whereas with her gadget, I can just shoot it, go down the staircase, have my gun up, bada bing, bada boom, right? It makes the timing more efficient. The timing is really important with a good side execute. So the pro pipe helps with that. And also, it helps to deal with cameras, shields, any kind of crap that the defenders have in the way that's going to make it a little bit easier for them to take the engagement. So Ash makes it more difficult for the defense to have engagement options. And the engagement options that she has are very good. She has positioning leniency with the three speed rating that is super, super flexible. And her guns are awesome. So she has a gadget that more often than not, will get used. I can't think of a single round where it won't be used. I think that if you're playing Ash correctly, you will take down at least one shield or something with with the gadget. Unless it's just a, like a troll round. But other than that, Ash is good at getting in the building, working however she needs to, and taking those aggressive gunfights. She has good guns. She's fast. That's all you need to know. And that's all I got for the top five attackers in Operation Deadly Omen. This, depending on how things shake up for this particular meta, I'm not particularly sure what Ubisoft is going to do. I think by next season, they might play around a little bit with Ying. They might take away one of her candelas. So I don't know how much longer this information is going to be relevant, but for now, I think it will pretty much be this way for three months. So if you liked the video, if it taught you anything, please give it a like, share it with other people in your stack, to let them know as well. And I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Deuces.